Hello? Can anyone hear me? Hello. Can anybody hear me? Hello, is anyone here? Hello. Did you use the link? Thank you. Hello? Hello? Hello.
Hello everyone. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome to today's webinar. So it's good to see you. So we'll try to wait for others to join us uh, and see whether they can join us. All right. Okay. So there's a what about now? Is it better now? Is there still echo? Because I actually went to join for my so maybe I have to go out of there so that you guys can hear me. What about now? Is there still echo? Let me try to log us. What about now? Is there still an echo? Or should we go to Zoom? I need... Okay, it is better. All right, good. All right, good. All right. So you guys are welcome. Uh, all right good afternoon everyone good afternoon teachers how are you doing today it's good to see you okay um i am busola liberal if you have not met me before so I guess some of us might be missing for the first time. So I would like you to introduce yourself. Can I hear your name? If possible, see you. Can you guys turn on your video so that I can see you? Let me see whether I can allow you to come in. All right. So let me hear your name in the comment section. Tell me your name and what class you teach. Okay. Tell me your name on the class you teach. Do you understand? So um, I'm going to give you two minutes to do that. Two minutes. Let's introduce ourselves. Let's introduce ourselves. Your name and your class. Is everybody available in this, um, for this meeting so that we'll... When we start, we know we can all go on. I'm waiting. Let's type in our name quickly. Let's do this quickly. I'll 
Are we still there? I can't see you typing in your names. Are we here? Okay, you guys are connected as a group. Then, but tell me, how many teachers am I training today? Let me meet everybody. Just type in everybody's name. Everybody, somebody can do it on behalf of everyone, okay? One person can type in everybody's name so that I will know the people I'm speaking with because I would like to call your names while I'm, you know, going ahead with this training. All right, I'm going to share my screen now and then we'll dive in into what we have for today so as not to waste our time. All right. All right, let's dive into what we have for today. Please let me know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen, please? So I've already introduced myself. Let me know if you can see my screen quickly. So you're welcome to this free webinar on um, 21st century teaching methodologies and how to integrate technology into I hope you can see me. All right. So, um, as teachers, one thing I want us to know is that there are a lot of teaching methodologies that are changing the way education is these days. So a lot of um, a lot of ideas and um, things have been brought into the teaching industry. So teaching is not the way it used to be before now. So you know the traditional method of teaching, and a lot of things have changed right now. A lot of things have changed, and. Um, there are a lot of in, introductions into our educational so industry right now. So we have uh, a lot of things that are driving academic performance and then they're making it better than what it used to be. So we'll go over some of these innovative approaches that educators have forged over the last few years and that every 21st century teacher should be acquainted with. So we'll quickly go over that, okay? We have eight methodologies that we're going to look at today. So I want you to follow me. We're going to have a lot of practical sessions. So I will, I will encourage you to follow me, all right?
So these are the things we're going to be looking at today. We have the first one, flipped classroom. We have budget project-based learning, collaborative learning. We have gamification, problem-based learning, design thinking, thinking-based learning, then and lastly, competence-based learning. So I'm going to be discussing with you what are the meaning of all these things. I'm actually even going to show you a couple of videos so as to help you understand this better. All right. So um, let's dive right into it. I don't know how many of you have heard of what we call flipped classroom. When we talk about flipped classroom, what do we mean? When we talk about flipped classroom, one of the modern method methodologies that has gained a popular more popularity in recent years is flipped classroom. So flipped classroom So um flipped classroom is a meta um pedagogical approach pedagogical approach in which the traditional elements of the lesson taught by the teacher are reversed so it's just as if you know your normal traditional way of teaching right when you come into the class you introduce a new topic right you explain the topic you give the objective of the lesson and then you you begin to let the students know what you're going to talk about and then you begin to teach that's our traditional way of teaching so flipped classroom is you taking it's just as like you give them assignment right so the the flipped classroom is actually when you give them the topic ahead and then they go home to research the topic so the student go home, research the topic, even when you have not taught them that topic before. So they go to their houses, research these topics on their own, then come back to the classroom. So probably you're going to be teaching the topic, uh, you know, next week, Monday. For example, like today, you have told them that, okay, next week, Monday, we're going to be talking about addition of fractions. And you have given them the topic today like today being friday you give them the topic so by monday you're teaching the topic so um the children go home to go and study what addition of fraction is all about they look at it so they look at it and then they, they study it. So when they come into the classroom on Monday, they have a pre-knowledge of what you're going to talk about. They are, they are already aware because they've gone back home to learn. So they are at home. They've learned what additional fractions are. Some of them have even, might have even gained enough knowledge that you don't really have to teach them any longer. The truth is, by the time you put an exercise on the board, they will be able to deliver because they've gone home to study it. And, and some of them come back already ready, as in with full knowledge. They have a hundred percent knowledge of what addition of fraction is all about. I'm just giving addition of fraction as an example. So that's it. So that's what we call flipped 
classroom. So, you know, this is the 21st century. A child is not supposed to do all the teaching. So there are a lot of information online. There are a lot of information everywhere. So you are supposed to engage this type of method. In fact, all these methodologies I'm going to be showing you today is all what we have used. I use them when I'm teaching. I do this a lot of times. So usually I will give my children, like we give them the curriculum actually. We give them a list of topics we'll be treating. At the beginning of the term, we do a web. We call it a course web. So we write all the topics that we're going to be treating in a mass, in a we call it numeracy, literacy, science, you know, social studies, civic, all the subjects like that. We write them, we put them in a web. So it's in a circular form. So we write the major topics anyway. So most times we don't write, we don't give them the full topic, but like six, seven topics, we give it to them. So they go home with a course web. So they are reading ahead of the classes. So when we do the class, when we have the class or that particular subject, so they already know what we're going to talk about. So they are coming with questions in particular areas that they do not understand. So that's the um, very um, the topmost advantage of a flipped classroom. A child will be able to ask relevant questions to the objective of the class. And it also helps you to optimize the time you use in class. You know, as uh, time for teaching is mostly, at most, you have 45 minutes for a subject, right? A lesson is 45 minutes. Okay, perhaps you have some double periods. But still, most time, the time is not enough to cover up that topic. Most especially in the secondary school setting. You know, those in the senior secondary school, the time is usually not enough. So it is important you give them these topics ahead of time. So they go home to read about the topics. So when they come back to the classroom, they are asking you questions in areas that they do not understand. So they are not just looking at you and moping and then watching you teaching them. No, teaching has passed that level. So teaching these days has passed that level. Your children are not supposed to be looking at you doing all the talking in the classroom. That is not what teaching is these days. These days, teachers don't do all the talking. In fact, 80% of the talking is done by the children. So the students do 80% of the talking. You are to monitor. Your work is to monitor, is to guide. As a teacher, you are to guide and monitor what they are doing. So they have several activities that they do. And some of those activities, we'll be talking about them in the course of this training, OK? So just um, work with me. Take note of this. Flip classroom is the first methodolo methodology that you need to take note of. It is very important. OK? So. And this helps to meet the needs of special needs students. You know, all your students are not on the same level. We have high achievers, we have average achievers, and we have low achievers. So these students, at, um, by the time you have given them this topic, especially the low achievers, at least if they don't know anything, it will help them to at least prepare themselves. Because some children need more time to actually comprehend what you're teaching. So that is why this is very important. They need more time to be able to understand what you're talking about. So giving them that topic ahead of time will help them to, go, to have enough time to study that topic, to read on that topic, to research that topic before you teach the topic. Okay, now let's move on. So the next topic, uh, the next then, project placing, shutting that speed be held. Project learning has to do with giving projects. So let me tell you, um, in my school where I work, normally at the beginning of the term, we have assigned students to different projects that they are going to do. So some topics I do 
we go teach. So there are some topics I don't teach. Like the students will go and do a project for those topics. And let's see. So the students do projects on these topics. Um, I remember when I was going to teach uh, rocks. So instead of me coming to class to teach them rocks, what I did was give them projects. I told them to go and do a project on rocks. So they went and I told them all the things I need them to, to do. So all the subtopics I need them to research, on rocks so i told them about it so they find out about it then i remember the other time when i was teaching a topic um natural disasters natural disasters i did not even bother teaching it i just gave it as a project to my students so they went home did their research in fact came to the classroom to present it so if that that's project based learning they did it as a project and they did presentation on it. You know, one thing you're, you're going to achieve with this, first, you're going to build the student's confidence. When you allow them to do this project, they get, they become confident of their own learning journey. They are more confident of their own learning journey. Now, and another thing is they hone their learning. They hone their own learning. So this allows students to acquire key knowledge and skills through the development of projects that respond to real life problems. So they are not just doing projects that are not related to what they are learning in school. So this project-based learning is you look for the topics that one of those topics or topics related um, in your curriculum, maybe per term every term you should have like two three projects that your children are going to do before the end of the term so there's no term that you shouldn't have project the children have projects to do at least two three projects every term okay so the teaching based on projects or integrated search is today the best didactic guarantee for an effective development development of key skills did you see that key skills so this is a guarantee it's an effective way of acquiring knowledge of the curriculum content so you can start from a concrete problem so instead of the traditional way and the abstract model of teaching where you come to the class and you are the one doing all the talking and teaching them so they have gone home to, to research this work, this topic, and they are coming back to tell you about it. So how do you think? They will retain more knowledge. They will retain the knowledge better than when you are the one teaching them and then you're asking them questions. So it helps them to develop more complex competences such as critical thinking. Because sometimes they have to think. Okay, I also remember the time I had my students to build the um, electrical circuit. So they had to go home and build the electrical circuit. So what I was teaching them electricity. So they had the project was for them to build electricity. So can you imagine that? So it 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 it, it was practical to them. By the time they were done, in fact. They, they showed me, I was, I was amazed myself with the work they were able to do, you know, and uh, that got them and their parents involved, which is a right way of learning because parents are supposed to be involved in the learning of the children. You understand? So they, they did it and then anytime I put it in the question, whenever I ask the question that they should draw an electrical sex, they usually get on record sense when it gets come to that so they do better even than those topics that i taught them myself you understand so that's a very good one and, and the great advantage of project-based learning so you might need to incorporate that 
into your teaching. Another thing we do, another methodology is collaborative learning. So this, all these methodologies are not uh, one to one. So it's important that you you incorporate all this more. You don't just do flipped classroom and say, oh, only the, the, my, my style is just flipped classroom and then you leave it in flipped classroom. No. So while you're doing flipped classroom, you're also adding project-based learning to it. You're also adding collaborative learning. So all these eight methodologies I'm going to be teaching you are what you're going to incorporate into your teaching style. So that makes you a qualified, you know, 21st century teacher. So collaborative learning has shown to result in higher student achievement. And when we talk about collaborative learning, what is this about? Okay. So when, when from the word collaborate anyway, you know that it's like working in groups. So usually um, what we do in my class is we group. So this is usually how my class, okay, let me just tell you, the typical way my class usually starts, like when I want to teach a subject, these are start. So I start with a video just to just to get their attention. Then I start with um, a play. A play. First thing, I don't even introduce the topic. So I don't come to the class and say, oh, good morning, class. The topic we are treating today is, is science or is reproduction. No, I don't do that. So if I want to start a class, I would just um, probably call one person and uh, a male if, I want, if the topic I'm teaching is reproduction. So I'll call a male, a female, and then, um, you know, I'm giving an example. For example, if you're teaching SS classes, you know, you can call them because Senior secondary school classes to know what happens in reproduction. You could um you could um, use use a uh, use a plant. You can use the plant to show that okay when you water this plant and then it grows, what happens? It brings that fruit. Okay, or you use a man, uh, a male and a female, and then brings a baby. What happens when it was the reproduction result of a male and female? Okay, interaction this is a baby. So things like that. I'm just to be examples. Okay, so you could use that. So typically, that's how I start my class. So when I do that, most times is either I'm grouping them in a, in a for a game, and I'm saying, okay, um, where where for example, I remember one now that you can remember now. Uh, when I wanted to teach um, this math topic, um, what's it called? Writing in words, writing in words. So, and uh, I, I told them to come out. I told all my children to come out to the front of the class. So I grouped them in threes. I grouped them in threes. And I said, um, this first family, this is the uh, thousand family. This is the unread family. This is a million family. This is a 10 of millions family. So I group them like that. I've not told them the topic that we're teaching. I just group them. Okay. After the game, I don't say we're playing a game. So um, any family that is uh, not able to deliver the start of the game. Do you understand? So I then give each person in the family a number. So the unright family. I give them three numbers, okay? I'll tell them maybe you are one, two, three. And then I'll say, one is what? What's the place value? Okay, yes, that's the topic I was trying to teach, place value. So I will now say, what place are you? So you in a in hundred family. So what place are you? The person will say, really. okay, what place are you? You under uh, 10. And what place are you? 100. So we'll go to the thousand family. All right, so like that, if I now give them a number, I'll tell them to read the number. So if I give um, the thousand family five, 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 so I give the million family three, six, seven. 
So they will read it together. The middle family will say 367 million, so 555,000, and then 173. So you, can you see they've done um, writing a word? So we have already done it without even knowing. So I use it to teach place value. I use it to teach number, writing numbers in word. And I use that to also teach uh, identifying place values and the value of, uh, of a number in um, the value of a number. Yes, the place and the value, all right? So, um, okay, let me remember another thing that we usually do. So after that, okay, let me just go on. I was describing typically my, my class right so after that we will now go into just watching it one minute or two minutes. then after that we will play <laughs> i give them this is how i teach like genetically this is how i teach so Numeracy, literacy, science. Um, I don't do much of it, but I do a play. I do the other one. So after that, and then they start doing the work. Do all the method. So oftentimes, when I ask, that I still struggling, and I put them in a group. Creative learning concept. So I now group them. For example, if I have that class, I'll group them into threes. So like my students, so I have three, three, three. Do you understand? So that's three groups. So I give them a work, like a, a, an exercise. Each group will have an exercise for them to do. So that's what I do. After that's what we call cooperative learning. So I put them in a group, and I give exercise to each group. So each group will now discuss how they are going to find the solution to the exercise. So if there's no subject, there's practically no subject I don't do this grouping. Most especially numeracy, science, and then um, social studies school, civic. So there's no subject that you cannot do grouping, that you cannot do cooperative learning. So it's just to help those that are really, really low, you know, those low achievers, those children that are struggling, that, that they find it difficult to understand the concept, like the others, they are not quick to understand. So you, you help them. So by the time they are there, they when they hear their, their colleague, their classmates, explain to them and then they also contribute what they think should be the way to solve this issue or solve the problem they get to understand better so individual learning so this kind of learning has helped students to achieve the class objective do you understand now so this this of um cooperative learning has really has really helped to improve attention, involvement, and acquisition of knowledge. Yes. So, you know, most times when you're talking, some of them might be distracted. But when they are in a smaller group, they, they, they need to put in their attention. Okay? So they cannot be distracted. They are focused because, you know, you know what we usually do? We time them. So being in that group, they know that they just have maybe at most at most i give them one minute and i can't stop so i start counting down sometimes i give them 30 seconds sometimes i give them 50 seconds so it depends on you sometimes i give them 10 seconds depending on the exercise i give to them so i'll just have some 10 9 so all of them are on their toes because they want to deliver they, they don't want to mess up so they are are like quickly let's see how do we get this how do we get this so do you see them they are, they are trying to quickly solve the problem so this helps to retain their attention for to retain their focus to keep them focused 
on the work at hand. Do you understand? So that's the um, cooperative lady. Now, gamification. Oh my God. Gamification as is an exciting way of delivering your topics. I, if you're not, if you have not been using this, you have been denying these children quality learning. Seriously. If you have not been introducing gamification into your system, you are you are shortchanging these children. That's what you're doing. Yes, because there are a lot of games online and offline. So don't think it's only online games. No, offline games too are available that you can incorporate into your teaching surpass the knowledge of what topic you are teaching and some of you might want to ask me and eh, which one we, which game will they use or when they are learning okay if you can give me a topic so i can help you and I actually give you a game that they can use you understand so the truth is you know as a teacher when you're preparing your lesson plan you are supposed to research so um this gamification comes in when you are well prepared for your class if you have not done your own work by making a proper lesson plan for the class you will not be able to incorporate most of these things i'm talking about do you understand so you it is important so for example I remember when I was going to teach fractions, I actually, I didn't get anything, you know. Okay, I got some materials because our school actually had a lot of material. But there are some times I will have to cut out papers myself. I will cut papers, okay? Or I print out materials and cut them for games that they will use for this game. Or I just formulate a game that i know that will help them to understand what i want to teach okay how many of you know this game this uh letter game that we, that we do a you write a b c d a b c d to z and then you now say names of person that start with a you know that game right names of people that start with b so what topic do you think you can teach with us can somebody tell me just that the fact that all of you are joined together as a group i'm not able to to have an interactive process. anyway it is well let's continue so i will tell you the game we can have with us the topic we can have with that game is nouns nouns names of person so also so also you can do pronouns with it so it is a game that will work well for nouns names of persons, names of place, names of things, right? Good. So another thing, let me let me tell you about this game. Okay, we have Scrabble game, we have chess game, we have board games. You know your board games can be used for a lot of things. Even Legos. Legos. You know? Um, okay, now let me have the senior secondary school. Senior secondary school. Most likely, anyway, mostly in secondary schools, well, you can you can introduce some gamifications too, but um, not lots of gamifications because a lot of serious work is done in secondary school. But uh, for secondary school, I would recommend more of project-based learning. Okay, more of project-based learning for secondary school, and then more of flipped classroom more flipped classroom project-based learning and more of a uh, cooperative learning for for secondary oh, school students oh, okay. so for secondary school students i would recommend flipped classroom uh project-based learning and um cooperative learning more of that should be incorporated into your teaching gamification should be more in the primary section because because children are usually bored they love to play games more than to learn so but when you bring games 
into their learning. It makes the learning interesting. And they will want to learn more. Just you want them to learn. More. So they want to learn more. So you're helping them to increase, you're increasing their interest. So they are not just um they are not just learning, you know. You know, some children will even start sleeping when you start those your teaching. And you will be thinking, ah, baby, has she has eaten too much. He has eaten too much in the house. That's why she's sleeping. Hey, this one. Stand up. Raise your hand up. Hey, chill, yeah, chill up. Get up, family. You are sleeping. Raise one leg up. Ah, please. Let's stop all that. You are teaching. And then you are punishing the child. How is the child even going to pay attention? Please introduce games. By the time you introduce games, you see, there's no child that will sleep in your class. Let me tell you, go and start it today. On Monday, go and start it. You see that there's no child that will ever sleep in your class. And in fact, whatever you teach, <laughs> they will they will remember it very well. I'm telling you, whatever you teach, they will remember it. So usually, I know there are a lot of uh, materials, resources. Okay, if the school is going to provide. Okay, you might be thinking, and eh, the school did not provide us new resources. But teachers, you can you can improvise. You can provide um, teaching materials for your staff. You can cut out, maybe for example, they are doing sentences. You can cut out sentences. You can write it with your hand, with your viral, or with marker. Write it on plain sheet. Cut it into different pieces. Scatter it. Tell them to rearrange the sentence. That is a game. You understand? So that way they will understand what you're teaching better. Do you get it? So there are a lot of games now that you can incorporate into your teaching. So please, let us do that. All right? Let us do that. Okay. Now, enough about uh, gamification. I, I, I believe you all understood what I just said. Okay, I will give you some time. At the end of this class, I will send it to you. I cannot give it to you in this webinar. I will send it to your school director. It will, send, it will give you those sites. There are certain sites that you can go to. They are free. They are totally free that you can use. That you can use to get ideas, different ideas for your, for your classroom, for your subjects. So even on different topics. And I'm telling you, there is no topic that there is no a game that there, there is no a game idea. There is no topic that does not have game idea. So let me tell you. So it's just because you don't know. All right. So I'm going to give you different sites that you can visit just for ideas. And if you can, you know, probably bring it up while you're teaching, it will be nice. But if you cannot, you can devise, um, improvise ways by which you can introduce it into your teaching. Like maybe you can use cardboard, you can use ordinary paper. So don't say, ah, because there is no cardboard. Ordinary paper, you can use it. Old textbooks, old textbooks that those children are not using before. You can cut out pictures from them. You can cut out some things from those old textbooks and use it as games during your, uh, your, your teaching. Do you understand? Okay. So now let's go to problem-based learning. Another one you need to consider is problem-based learning. So the other one that we could consider was project-based learning. All right? Project-based learning. And this is problem-based learning. So this is a cycling learning process composed of different stages, starting with asking questions, acquiring knowledge, that in turn leads to more questions in a glory in a growing complexity cycle. So what does that mean? It means that you give them the problem and you ask them to go and find a solution to it. Simple. I'm telling you. This helps to develop critical thinking. So, for example, now let me give you because I love to give examples. I don't just like to talk. I believe is the application that is very important. It's not just learning about it. It's you applying it to your teaching. That is very important. That is very important. So, for example, you want um, you're teaching a topic in chemistry. 
filtration or separating techniques. I'm using secondary school topics so that the senior secondary school will know that this is really for them. Yes, this is really for them. So you want them to find out about separation techniques. Ask them if your diary and rice pour together mistakenly you go and pour gary inside rice how are you going to separate it that is a problem right so your children need to think of how they are going to separate from rice them separation techniques but you did not tell them you're going to teach them separation techniques you just told them this is a problem and you want them to find a solution to it do you know they will go and they will start thinking, ah, how are we going to separate Gary from rice? What am I going to do? Some of them might say, okay, I'll pick the rice one after the other. But you tell them, you have to be specific. Tell them specifically a, of like a bucket of Gary inside a bucket of rice. Is a bucket of Gary that you poured in another bucket of rice. So it's a big, it's a big problem. So it's not just a small problem that they will think that they will have to pick with their hands. Do you understand? So let them know that okay, a bucket of garu was poured accidentally to an a bucket of rice. How should this person? How should GD separate garu from the rice? What do you think GD should do? Do you know that they will start thinking? Okay, ah, and she, she can you see that they will start telling you they can you see or something or they can you see a big a seed that has a big hole to contain the rice or a seed that has a, a small hole to contain the gary? Do you understand? So they will start thinking. So it has for them to be creative, they will be creative. You understand? Okay, in a large house. There is no electricity. How do you think this uh, Mr. Hackman should connect electricity to his house? He has, you know, they fixed his, uh, his meter, but still the, the light is not coming on. What do you think could be wrong? Why is there no supply of light to his house? The, there is nipper light everywhere, you know, there is a, um, he has his speed meter is loaded with, um, you know, card with, um, what's it called now? <laughs> he has um token, you know, his, his um, prepaid card is loaded with token for electricity. He has loaded his prepaid card, but still is not getting light to himself. What could be wrong? What's disturbing the electricity from flowing to the house? another problem and you need your children to find the solutions educators these are methods of teaching nowadays so gone are the days where we we'll go to the classroom and go and stand in front of the classroom and be teaching everybody okay thank god your school director is the one that called for this training now you are getting this training and you know your children will be different it they will be unique among other students who will come up with various solutions that will even bring creative solutions that will even bring you know that will bring profit to their life to their family I heard recently of a university graduate that discovered that discovered how to run a path without fear. Then now that we few prices, and then you know we are looking for alternative. We, with that boy now that discovered the alternative solution to the, a car, the, to cars using fuel, don't you know that the, um, in this this season, 
is a season of prosperity for him because many people want to invest in that in that technology he discovered he, he, he's using batteries to power cars they develop uh, a car powering it with a battery and then he said they don't even need to recharge it it recharges itself like i think he used a solar panel or something like that i'm not really sure but i'm just trying to tell you that what could have led to this guy discovery this solution what could have you know motivated him it must have been the way he was support from probably secondary school or university level, you know, always plays with problem and then get a solution to them. So please, let's help our students to be more creative. Let's help them. Let's motivate them. You know, you can even attach awards. You can attach the prize to anybody that come up with, it, with the best solution to the problem. So you give them the problem and then tell them that they have two weeks to, you know, solve this problem. They have two weeks to come up with solutions to this problem and then attach a reward to it. So all these things, this is the way I do it in my own classroom. I give marks. So when it's project-based, I will tell them that project is 10 marks or that project is 30 marks. And that is true. I don't just say it with mouth and I mean whatever I say. So when they come back with their project, I give the mark and I record it and it's reflecting their results. So we are not just saying it just for same sake. No, it's actually part of our own assessment that we do for our students. Project is part of the assessment. Problem-based learning is part of the assessment. We assess them on various problems they are able able to solve so you can attach marks award marks for all these things so nobody is coming to tell you that they forgot to do it or they, they are just coming with one shabby solution that doesn't make sense they will take it serious so this will help them to take it serious do you understand so now another one we're talking about another methodology is design thinking. design thinking so education has always been a prolific space for innovation. So teachers all over the world are constantly coming up with new ideas and methodologies to introduce in the classroom, making the best of the tools at their disposal. So this is design thinking is the application of STEM. How many of you know what STEM is? STEM is science, technology, you know, integration, uh, mass into our um, studies. So STEM, a lot of schools now do a subject, they call it STEM, they have a club, they call it STEM club. You understand? But it doesn't have to be a club for us. For you guys, it doesn't have to be a club. Introduce it, incorporate it into your teaching. You understand? Incorporate it. So apply it to whatever you're doing. So this more that makes it possible to identify with greater accuracy, okay, the individual problems of each student. So this helps you to understand those students that even gifted. It helps you to understand the students that are gifted in crafts, in science, in art, you know, in mathematics. It helps you to understand their core, core um, you know, strength, the area of their strength. So please, let's incorporate them into our teaching, whatever we're teaching. All right? Thank you. So uh, another one, I think this is the last one. Okay, second to the last one. It's thinking-based learning. Thinking-based learning. So beyond the debate around the effectiveness of learning by memorizing, oh, please. Learning by memorizing parts and data when discussing education. Please. Learning has gone past memorizing parts and data. Now, let's make it more concrete, more real to us. One of the most talked about aspects is the need to show students how to work with the information they teach them to be contextualized 
to contextualize, analyze, relate, argue. You know, teach them how to argue a point. In short, convert the information they have to knowledge. Okay. Help them. Help them to analyze when you teach a topic. Don't just leave it like that. Ask them why they think this should be it. Why should this be this? Why should this ask them to argue or to relate it to the uh, to the real life, to the real life? So you're teaching a topic in math, relate it to real life. You're teaching them multiplication. How does multiplication relate to their life? What's the, what's the relevance of it? What's the relevance of it? You know, some you know, you know, this uh, that is going about that school is calm. If you don't want your students to say school is calm, let them know how um, education is important to them, how th there is the relevance of education to, their, to the world that we live in. Okay, it's necessary. So I'm going to show you a sample of my uh, my of my lesson plan. So in, actually, in my lesson plan, I usually have a column for relevance. So I will write how relevant this topic is to the world. How can these children apply this topic to the world? So help them to develop thinking skills beyond memorization. So in this world, help them to develop effective thinking so our children sometimes i used to ask them so how do you think but that didn't want to think about it. you know because these children these days they don't even want to think about anything they want you to do all their thinking for them it's not it's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be allow them to think about it okay so you are talking about digestion and then they said um digestion starts from the mouth ask them how is it possible? How can digestion come from the mouth? You know, let them think about it. So, if for example, you are asking them, okay, when we eat, what do we do? What happens in our mouth? So you ask them. So the, some of them will tell you, okay, we treat our mouth eat, and then the, the, the saliva in the tongue mixed with the food and all that and all that. Okay, so. You take them through like that and then ask them, why do we poop? Digestion. Why do we poop? What happens? Where does poop come from? <laughs> You're helping them to think. You understand? So it's important. You don't just teach and just teach. You need to help them to reason what you and they should argue. No, for example, especially mathematics, you know, two a plus b equal to zero. How is that possible? Let them, you know, do it um, in another method. Okay, what if we use this method? What if we say two a equal to this, or two a minus this equal to this? Does it still give us the same answer? You know, so whatever you're trying to teach them, let them know. Give them different methods by which they can come across that question and then they can still get the same answer. Okay, so we're going to be another live training where I will tell your school director that we will have is the, the training on mathematics. There are certain mathematics topics that there are certain ways you need to teach them, and if you're not teaching them that way, you're, you're not doing good, you're not doing well. So, there are certain topics. That, uh, that you need to teach certain ways, and if it's science, mathematics, science, those three especially, there are topics that, that 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 you need to apply various different methods. So, and if you're not applying those methods, when your children go to another school or when they meet with other students, they will say, "Oh, no, my teacher never taught me like this." Do you understand? You are supposed to know different methods by which they can get a particular, you know, on a particular topic. For example, addition. We have um, number bonding. Number bonding addition. 
has all like addition of for example okay let's say you want to get ten. you're trying to add up to get 10. seven plus three is ten six plus four is ten five plus five is ten you know nine plus one is ten so there are different numbers that you can add up to give you ten so let them know so it's just like saying you're teaching them only five plus five gives ten and when you're doing addition there are also different methods of doing addition we have different names for it even when you are doing multiplication there are different methods of doing multiplication there are different methods of doing um division so all those um, um topics you need to learn how to do them and I'm, I'm not going to blame some of you because you don't know just like um the time when i was ignorant of all these topics so, so but when i learned when i was trained and then i learned that okay these are the other methods i can actually teach this particular topic because one one method might not work for every student every child might not understand that particular method the child might understand the other methods that you introduce but that particular method which you choose might not be the one they want to understand. So let's say, for example, you show these five methods. At least out of that five methods, the child should be able to understand one method that will be able to use it to get the answer correctly. Okay. So I will I will organize a training. That will be another special training for that. Okay. So that we will talk about that as science too. There are ways of teaching science. So science is not supposed to be taught like just come to class, keep the topic and do that. No, that's not how we teach science. So um, that will be another training entirely, okay? So let's just finish with this. Competence-based learning. So competence-based learning talks about the acquisition of knowledge, the development of skills and establishment of work habits as their main so this is using assessment to know what the, the child have learned. This is the use of what assessment. Competence-based learning is the use of assessment to be able to analyze, to be able to, um, you know, to be able to like, decipher whether the child has actually learned what you thought or not. So there are various assessment methods. So one way is repeat. So, so there are various methods that you can use to assess students. You know, I've told you your role in the classroom is just, it's not just to go and uh, stand in the front of the class and lecture or teach. Your role is to monitor and assess what they are doing. So then basically you will give them various assessments so why they are doing group work? Your assessment is going on. Why they are doing the game? Why they are playing the game? You are assessing them. Why they are, um, you know, doing recitation? You are assessing them. Why they are working on their worksheets? You are assessing them. So there are various ways you assess a child before you will not finally conclude that this child has learned the stuff. We have various methods of assessment. We have, um, you know, project-based assessment, you know, problem-solving assessment. We have gamification assessment. I've mentioned it before now. We have worksheet assessment. And then the last of all is your normal, normal assessment that you do, you know, set questions and answers. That's another assessment. That should even be the last of all okay but uh, all these other assessments that are giving them enough enough credits to have shown whether the child has actually learned this topic or not okay so uh, it, uh let me this this will be the end of the methodologies i'm going to stop sharing my screen now and then i will try to I give you my lesson plan. Let me show you the lesson plan so you see 
then we'll talk about, we'll talk about this how you should prepare your lesson plan okay I guess by one second random um, I hope that's okay by horse. All right. All right, let me share my lesson plan with you. So you can see what it looks like. And I said I have a video for you, right? Yes, don't let me forget the video. Okay. Okay, so... Sorry, I want to open another one. I hope you can see this. All right, let me share it again. So, yeah, it is. So, this my lesson plan says subject area, number of students, class context. Voila, voila means what we are learning, what we are learning. Relevance. Remember what I told you? So this particular one, I think, okay, said in this lesson, the student will learn how to group and identify atoms, elements, and compounds. Uh, let me look for another. Um, so... So really, okay, let me just show it to you. This, we have object C, what we are learning to, and uh, we have outcomes, okay? So objective students should be able to explain what are these and differentiate, identify. Then outcomes, I can explain this, I can explain that. Then the resources I'm using, and then the key vocabulary, the current knowledge. All right. So can you see it starter? This is how I start my lesson plan. So code breaker. This is a game. This is actually a game. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. So this is a game. A the work is like a code. So. They decipher the code and then they from there they are able to, to know what the topic is. So usually when I start, usually when I start, I don't start with the topic and all that. I, I usually start with this code breaker. Like I told you before now, I'll start with this code breaker. After the code breaker, so class teacher asks the class to play the code breaker game. Then we'll connect 10 minutes. So we have five minutes for this. So 10 minutes, we'll, we'll uh, play the video. So once I play the video, then I'll ask the students to share what they learned from the video. 
Can you see? I'm, I'm not even doing any talking. From code breaker game, they watch video and the student will share what they learned from the video. Can you see that? Then this is where I talk. So this is actually where I talk as you say. So I will then project my PowerPoint and explain the slides to the pupils. So this is where this is the point where I talk. Then after that, demonstrate. Then class teacher group the students into three. So I group the students into three to work with beads to make molecules of water. So they are working with beads to make molecules of water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and glucose. Then they move on to consolidate independent work. So this is a worksheet. Usually I print out this worksheet for them. If I cannot print it for them, I project it or I write it on the board. So they do it. So I will just tell them to do it. So um, if at the end of the day, if at the end of the day, you can see our notes. We don't have much notes. It's not about the notes. It's about what the children have learned. Do you understand? So it's not about you giving them lengthy notes and yet they do not learn anything from them. So the important thing is what they are able to learn. So support all students at every step of the concept thoughts, support low achievement to them by ensuring that they have understood and can explain some of the concept thoughts. So usually it might not be all of your children that will understand, you know, but at least support the low achievers they should be able to at least explain elements and compounds. If they don't know anything, they should be able to at least explain something out of that part. You understand? They might not be able to say everything, but at least they should be able to do something. Okay? Now let me go to another subject. So this is English grammar. Okay, now, what I wanted to really show you is this relevance. Relevance, learning nouns and its type. This is English grammar. Learning nouns and its type will help students to make meaningful sentences and apply the knowledge when writing. Can you see the relevance of learning nouns? It will help them to make meaningful sentences. So even when they are talking, because they've learned nouns, what nouns are, the types, how to use them. They will be able to apply it when they are writing. Because, you know, when you're writing nouns, you have to start with capital letters. When you're writing names of people, right? Names of places is with capital letters. So they will be able to do that when they are writing. So when they are writing, they are not just writing anyhow. So that's the relevance of what you're teaching them. So it's always important to let your puppies know the relevance of what you're teaching. And look at this English grammar now. Class teacher asks students to play a game of names. Names of people, place, things that start with letter A, B, and D. So I give them this letter A, B, and D, and then tell them to write the names of people, places. Or they play this game. This is a game too. This is a link to the game. Okay, so they play this structure. So another thing is um, they watch a video after. So basically, my class is after a game, they watch a video, then they play a game, and students discuss what they learn from the video. Can you see that this is how I incorporate all the teaching methodologies I taught you? This is how I incorporate it into my classroom. Can you see that? So um, I don't know if I have anyone project this in there. Let me see if there's any topics I have here. So basically, this that's what I do in the classroom. So this is numeracy. OK, now look at the relevance of this numeracy. It said this will help to improve memory skills. So they are supposed to talk about the topic is place value. So it will help them to improve memory skills, which is transferable skill that will help students to improve 
and into adult life. Students will find it easier to solve math problems and do mental assessments if they have already memorized their time step. This is the So now look at it now. Class teacher introduced the top by playing a family game. The students are put into three groups, and each group represents 100,000 a million family respects. The one I told you about. So they watch a video after the game. Okay. So um, teachers, there are a lot of fun ways to teach these days. So I would like you, I will implore you, I will beg you to please incorporate this fun way into teaching your children so your children are always happy to come to school so they are not scared of coming to school eh? you know so they will be excited anytime they are going to school they will say God, come here, come here. They are going to school because they know that school is fun but don't, don't make school boring for them don't make school boring all right <laughs> so please all right thank you hopefully um there are also um platforms i would like to introduce you to you know teachers platforms you can join you can follow people online for more knowledge you know so that you see what other teachers are doing there are a lot of songs that you can use to teach your subject i i know there are people i follow on instagram do you understand there are songs even for primary schools, oh, for primary, not baby classes at all. For primary schools, even in teaching, um, in teaching mathematics, there are songs that you will sing, and then you know they, they will sing it, and through that song, they are learning what they are supposed to learn. Yes, they're learning through the songs. They are learning through the games. They are learning. Okay. So please, let's 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 work on ourselves. Let's work on ourselves. Okay. Let's work on ourselves. Thank you. Right. Um, I hope you have learned one or two things from this class, um, this training today. I hope you have been able to gain some new knowledge and um or, or reinforce your knowledge you know so that you can begin to begin to apply them in your teaching i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you becoming a 21st century teacher uh i don't know if we can take questions I don't know if you can take questions or that. But let me know if you have questions. You can type them. Let me see how I can address them before we go. Okay. I don't want to keep it for too long because if the training is too long, you will not get all. Oh no. But you guys can come back and watch this. All right. I think it's saved on my YouTube page. You can always watch it again. All right. So, do we have questions? Can we take questions? Any question? One or two questions before we go. If there is any question, please type it. We have questions.
Okay, okay. I see you saying good day, Ma. All right. Good afternoon, Lua Salani. How was the class? Let me know. Did you learn anything from the class, from the training? Did you get anything today? Okay. Thank you. Loa Tonali, she said yes, ma. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you too for joining. I'm glad you were able to learn something today. So if there are no questions, I would like to release you so that I will keep you waiting for too long. Okay, I guess we'll call it a day then. My question is about how do we go about the project-based learning? Okay, I mentioned it. I don't know if you heard it when I said it, that uh, usually before you teach the topic, like, for example, if you know that, um, let me use natural disaster for an example, okay? Let me use natural disaster. If one of your topic is natural disaster, okay? Let's say you're going to teach it in the next two weeks or next three weeks, okay? So you tell them to go and do a project on it, to go and find out about natural disasters, okay? And um, they could actually come up with, you know, natural disaster, we have hurricane, we have cyclone, we have uh, earthquake and all that. So you can tell them to come and show you a practical way how earthquake can happen. Or what's that one? That uh, one of the lava overflowing, uh, molten magma and all that. You understand that? So you can tell them to build a volcano yeah, a volcano uh, to build a volcano they can use carton to build it they just need to go online they, they just need to speak they will go and find, make a research for children it's not the parents that to do the work or it's the children you can um give them hints of what they can do do you understand you can give them hints. most especially if it's not something you have been doing before you know, maybe it's the first time you're introducing them to project-based learning. You know, these things might be new to your environment. So you don't just, eh, hey, go and do this project. Go and do it. It's you that know how you will do it. I'm not, it's not my business. No, you won't do that. Okay? So you have to guide them. Okay? Because, for example, in my school, these students are used to doing projects. And their parents are also aware that they usually have projects they do every term so they are they are involved but you know in your school i'm not sure they usually do projects before now so you will have to introduce it in such a way that you will carry their parents along you encourage the student you just give them hints of what they can do and don't let it be a tough project at first 
So let it be a simple project that they can easily carry out so that they won't be discouraged. So, you know, they won't be discouraged in their first project. So subsequently, you cannot be giving them something tougher and tougher like that. You understand? So the project might be, okay, construct a volcano. And let's see how the magma is flowing out of the volcano. Do you understand? So they can use paint. They can make a hole in the cattle, build a cattle, make a small hole in between, and then pour um soap water or foam, anything, then put color, you know, on that soap water. So the soap water will begin to flow out. So it's just something. It they just need to be creative. You know, magma is usually yellow because it's the color of fire, right? Yellow or orange, orange. So you, they put a uh, orange coloring. They, they can get coloring anywhere, or they can get um, water. They can paint it, or they can even paint a paper orange and show it how it's flowing out. Not paste it on the cardboard to show that this orange paint, uh, orange paint and paper is the magma that is flowing out of the volcano. Simple, <laughs> you know. So that's it. it says, um, somebody say at the basic level, they don't really understand much about education. Okay, the parents, yes, that's where the school comes in. The school should create more awareness. And then, um, you know, we too, we keep giving them awareness on the importance of education. So we keep telling them, okay, how important education is. We keep showing them. So it's not just telling them. We show them the relevance. That's where our relevance comes in. You know, that's why I told you that you need to. Is there is a way you make your teaching, and then parents know that it's important for their children to get educated. You understand? There is there is a way you present education that helps parents to know the value of education. So a lot is on our on us. A lot is on us as teachers. We have a lot of work to do to ensure that we we present education in such a way that parents come to value. Look at your teaching finance. You're teaching money. Even in mathematics, you're teaching money, and still your children cannot identify money, and they cannot go and confidently buy things for their parents. So what's now the relevance of the money you're teaching? They don't know. They don't know the value of money. They don't know what how they could make money. They don't know how they could save money. They don't know how they could reproduce money. So those are things you need to teach so that parents will begin to value education. And they'll say, oh, wow, is that, is, did they actually teach you that in school? And they will say, yes. They taught us how to save. They taught us how to make profits. That money, I, I actually did this, and then I can begin to sell this, and then I'm, I'm making money from it. So, you know, parents will begin to value education better when we show them these things, when we teach right, seriously. If the onus is on us, please, teachers. Hmm. All right, any other question? Any other questions? So we'll call it a day. So um, let's prepare for the other um, training on um, mathematics, literacy, and science. Specifically, I will bring out certain topics that there's no way you teach that topic. Everybody do that topic. There's nobody that don't do addition in math. There's nobody that don't do multiplication in math. There's nobody that don't do um, division in mathematics. Do you understand? So there are certain topics that you can't but teach in math. So how to teach those topics, various methods of teaching those topics, I will show you. Do you understand? It's, uh, it's, more, it's, more, it's going to be more practical class. I hope I will be able to get, uh, I think we'll probably use Zoom for the next 
training so that we can have an interactive class because i need you to be involved i need to hear you okay so that when i'm teaching i will show you i will also even tell you to do some games that will that will help us to understand what we're really teaching do you understand okay thank you very much for joining me this afternoon okay hopefully to see you in the other training and more trainings afterwards all right so if you have not subscribed i think you should subscribe to the channel so because i will be dropping a lot of content i'll be dropping more content afterwards okay just for you guys mm -hmm. all right you guys enjoy the rest of your day and see you bye